You know, I've come to realize that after 30 year, almost 30 years in ministry and uh, mission work all over the world, mainly in Africa, but all over the world, there's one of the greatest battles that goes on in the minds and hearts of Christians is the battle between grace and law, between religion and relationship. Now, I want to explain to you what I mean by that, because I believe this is one of the crucial elements that we need to get revelation of the Holy Spirit in for each of our lives. And Romans 6.14 says, We are, sin shall not master us because we are not under the law, meaning the law of Moses, but we are under the grace of God. So I want to share that, I want to share it with you today on the importance of understanding what true grace is. Let me just say from the start that grace is the very reason that Jesus died on the cross. Because without grace, nobody can be saved. No one is righteous. No one has right standing with God unless it's through the grace that came because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So grace is an amazing um, system, a concept, but grace is actually, at the end of the day, is actually the person of Jesus Christ dying in our place on the cross. So let's just look a little bit today about grace. Now I know for some reason grace has become controversial in many, in many churches, in many people's eyes, and I don't really understand why that is, because the Apostle Paul was very clear that he was preaching the gospel of grace. So um, Acts 20:24 20, says, Paul says, "May um, I finish the race put before me? May I, where, may I obtain the prize in a sense and finish the task for which God called me to preach the gospel of grace?" And then he goes on to say, uh, "Those of you." amongst whom I preach the kingdom of God, you won't be seeing me again. So he was linking the kingdom of God directly to the gospel, and meaning good news, and the good news directly to grace. The gospel that we believe in, the gospel by which you and I are saved, is the gospel of Jesus Christ's grace. It's good news. <laughs> Grace is not bad news. Grace is good news. The law is bad news because the law exposes our sin and our, sh and our unholiness. And I'm going to do another teaching on the law and the purpose of all. Let me say the law is good when it's used in the correct way. I am not anti the law, but we cannot be saved by the law, nor can we be made righteous by the law, nor can we live by the law. So again, you can fo watch this follow-up teaching on the law and its purpose. And the law, by the way, is the laws of Moses. The Ten Commandments, there are 613 laws in the books, uh, in the Torah, the, the Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, those books, Genesis, the books of the Old Covenant. But we cannot be saved through keeping of the laws. No matter how much you try, no matter how much Israel tried, it fell short. We are saved by grace through faith. By grace through faith. So that no man can boast. Ephesians 2.8 You see, we are saved by God's goodness, compassion, mercy and grace that He earned on the cross. Jesus Christ earned on the cross by dying in our place. We are saved by grace through faith and not by works so no man can boast. So we're not saved by doing religious works. We're not saved by doing good works. You've heard me say this before. We are saved by God's grace, God's initiative towards us. The Holy Spirit starts drawing us to God and then we respond in faith by saying, Yes, Amen. Uh, Lord, I want you in my life. And by the way, if you've never done that, now is a good time. Now is the time of God's salvation. Now is the time of grace. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I encourage you to do that now. You can get down on your knees and say, Lord, come into my life. I give you my life. I surrender my life. I repent of my old way of thinking. God's grace is for you today if you've never done that. Maybe you've been going to church for years. Maybe you've never gone. Maybe you just 
like hate Christianity and Christians. I don't know. That's, that was my testimony. But one day I invited Jesus into my life because his love was touching me. By grace we are saved through faith. Ephesians 2.8 it says we cannot be saved by works. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, it says our oh, good works are like filthy menstrual rags in God's eyes. You see, if you think you can make yourself good enough by doing good things, make yourself holy enough by doing good things to get into God's favor, you're mistaken. So we also need to repent. Repent means to change our mind, to change our actions to change our worldview to a biblical understanding and by the way we need to be biblically founded we need to change our mind we need to repent and we need to understand we cannot be saved by religious works or even by good works and in fact where we where we think God owes us something because of our good works we need to repent of our good works as well as our sin our bad works I <laughs> be saved by grace so what is grace? Grace is God's undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor, blessing, gifts, and empowerment that comes through Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's unearned favor and merit before God is God's gift to us. The word charis, okay, the Greek word is charis. It means gift or grace or blessing. And we know in um, John 1, 16, it says, from the, that uh, the law came through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ so in the scriptures there's a direct link between grace and truth if you're not in grace it's hard to understand the truth so the law came through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ and it goes on to say in this passage in John, uh, John chapter 1 that from the fullness of Jesus's grace comes blessing upon blessing, gift upon gift, and favor upon favor. See, it's undeserved, unearned. And it's just this stream of God's blessing to those who choose to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To those who have repented and given their lives to Jesus, you are under God's blessing. You are under God's favor. God's not out to get you. God's not out to punish you. Your punishment, you were co-crucified with Christ on the cross. You've been punished with Christ for your sins. God is now out to bless you. Now, blessing is not a worldly understanding like the world says, but it's, it's a, it is a, a time of prosperity in Christ. A time of having like the power of God's love at work in you. The power of the Holy Spirit at work in you. The power to change things in your life. That's what true blessings are. The power to, to be empowered in your family life. That's what true blessings are. Jesus came to bless us with abundant life. And it's not abundant life if you're sick. It's not abundant life if you're demonized. It's not abundant life if you're in poverty. Grace came to break that. Grace came to put you into a place of stewardship of all the riches of God's kingdom un undeserved unmerited favor and that is why by the way grace is offensive to the religious the religious hate grace and if you are being stirred up now as I'm talking and you're saying bah oh, grace and, and you get you, you feel in angry maybe you need to be set free from a religious spirit <laughs> I had a religious spirit I was so self-righteous I used to think myself such a good person one day God said to me, Gary, you're self-righteous. You need to repent and you need to rely only on my grace given to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is the seal of God's love and grace. So grace is God's unmerited favor. God's, grace comes with Jesus Christ's finished work of the cross. He died for us on the cross. He died that our sins could be wiped clean as far as the east is from the west though your sins were like scarlet they are now as white as snow with washed away that is grace and it's offensive because often we think we have to do stuff to earn God's forgiveness but grace said no it's God's free gift to all who would believe in Jesus Christ and become his children so grace is good news Grace is something that you need to get into, you need to understand, because it is actually what has saved you. 
And grace is not a doctrine, it's a person, Jesus Christ. He was full of grace. Funny enough, before the cross, Jesus didn't actually preach grace, but he displayed grace to the woman caught in adultery. He forgave her sins and he, and he said, I don't condemn you. You know, to, 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 to the prodigal son, the picture of the prodigal son, he said, like, just come back to the father. Your sins are forgiven. Those are all pictures of God's grace. And after grace was pro has been progressively revealed throughout scriptures. And Paul was the ultimate apostle of God's grace. It's the ultimate gospel which he received directly from Jesus Christ by revelation. And not from the earthy Jesus as he walked the earth, but from the risen, ascended and glorified Jesus Christ. It says Paul was caught up into heaven and he received revelation of grace directly from Jesus Christ. A gospel, good news, directly from Jesus Christ. And he warns us, don't preach any other gospel. Don't go back into the law. Stick to grace. Stick to grace. So Galatians 2.20 says this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. You see, co-crucified with Christ. The life I now live is Christ in me and by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and died for me. See, that's important to understand. We have been crucified with Christ. We died with Christ on the cross. Our lives are no longer our own. They belong to God. They belong to Jesus. We are now under grace. And when we sin, grace covers those sins. And in fact, grace is the very empowerment to stop you from sinning. Not the law. The law doesn't stop you from sinning. If I, if I tell you don't do something, it's not going to stop you from doing it. You know that. <laughs> you can even see it in your kids. Tell them don't do this and they go and do it. But grace, in Titus 2.12, it says, For grace shall enable you to say no to the lusts of the world. Because you see, you have died with Christ. And in that Galatians 2.20, it says, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness, right standing with God, could be obtained through the keeping of the law, then Christ died for nothing. And my question is, have you set aside God's grace? How do you set aside God's grace? Most people would say, well, you set aside God's grace by sinning. But that's not what it says. The Word of God, the Bible says you set aside grace by reverting back to religious law. See, righteousness cannot be obtained through the keeping of rules and regulations in the Ten Commandments. Let me say the Ten Commandments are not bad, but they don't make you righteous. Okay? What makes you righteous is faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What makes you righteous is God's gift of grace. There's a direct link between right standing with God and grace. So we need to get into grace. We need to embrace grace. And I encourage you, go to the scriptures. Look up every scripture on grace. You will be staggered that the gospel is totally about God's grace. Totally about being justified just as if you sinned. By, just as if you've never sinned, sorry, Ooh, slip of the tongue. Just as if you've never sinned, justified by God's grace, made right with God by God's grace, by God's gift of Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus, not about us. We die to ourselves. We have to die to ourselves to be born again in Christ. So I encourage you today to remember you are not under the law. Do not let anybody place you under the law you are under grace and the power to come against sin is grace not law law is there to expose your need for a savior but grace is there to make you children of god grace when you're under grace the power of sin is broken because the law is the power of sin and that's what the scriptures say grace nullifies sin in your life you shall not sin carry on sinning because we're under grace god forbid as it says in romans chapter 6 grace is not an excuse to sin you see some people sadly have taken grace and used it as an excuse to sin well okay i can just go and do anything i want but actually if you're truly saved if you truly understand grace there will be no desire in your heart. It's not your nature anymore to sin. It's your nature. You are now a slave to righteousness, not a slave to sin. 
Grace is good news, people. Grace is the empowerment to live a holy life. Grace is the empowerment to say no to sin. Grace is the empowerment to repent, to change your mind about sinful things and to walk away from them. Grace is truly good news because Jesus did it all on the cross. So I hope this is encouraging to you today. As I say, plunge deeply into grace. Not as an excuse to sin, but as an excuse to do everything right in God's eyes. Because you are now empowered by the Holy Spirit. He is holy and he's come to live in you by God's grace. God's gift and God's promise is the Holy Spirit living in you. You no longer live. Christ, your life now is hidden in Christ. You are righteous. You are holy. Christ has become our righteousness, our redemption and our holiness. <laughs> it's good news. It's so such good news that it really offends people. It offends the intellectual because they cannot understand it. And it offends the religious because it nullifies their good works. And that is where a major battle is going on in the church at the moment. That is why people who are preaching grace are being targeted. And I want to tell you, if you're not in grace, then you're not saved. For you are saved by grace and not by works.